he was cool. He did have a van chasing you. Nah, he's a nice guy. <laughs> Marcus still Marcus still believes deep down in his heart that the Fratellis Fratellis are decent people. It was just Mario being an asshole. Right, he was somehow uh, putting bad information in Lorenzo's ear. Yeah. Man, what a douchebag. Yeah. Is there anything else your characters wish to discuss or share with each other? Certainly Joseph's right. character has to be caught up a lot to speed, and I'm sure, assuming that uh, at least Byron's kind enough to do that. Well, I have something I need. I have something I should talk with the other two. Not Joseph, sorry. What a um, it has, it has, I have a rumor dealing with Boss Callahan. And certainly, if you guys want to share, like, anything you've heard, like I said, like, all that in-character stuff, that's perfectly fine to do. Just so long it's conducted through the scope of what your characters would share with each other and how much you want to share with each other, rather than... I mean, did Joseph share that... Leslie is going to be taken care of by Boss Callahan. Oh yes, uh, definitely. He would have brought that up that he managed to get her off into Staten Island uh, to protect her. And if anyone questions him why there, it's because he doesn't want her to die by the scourge until you, we figure out what exactly happened at that night because he wants to make sure everything stays in play until we can fully exploit it to the best of our abilities. And you and you now, any else will ask, so you now owe Boss Callahan a boon? Yes, there is, uh, there is that side effect. It's not one that I'm happy about, speaking in character, but it is, it is something that sometimes needs to be done. Okay. N Knowing that, he's going to take Byron and David aside and say to them, I think there's something you two should know. I have heard a rumor from my Toreador friends that Boss Callahan is trying to go into an attempt to make a move into Queens. And if our friend here has, owes him a boon, that boon might be help Boss Callahan take over Queens. Uh, and Byron's going to say, well, he knows a little bit about Valentine. Uh, Valentine is a top candidate for becoming Prince. He's got a lot of power, a lot of favors, and uh, we kind of owe him a favor now, maybe even a boon, because he kind of bailed us out of the uh, dealing with the family thing. So... We're kind of caught in the middle there, and that's why he wants to talk to Valentine. He says it probably wouldn't be a good idea to go against him. Basically what I'm saying is I, ha I have no ill feelings towards the Anarchs, but when we're caught in the middle, you have to go with the side you trust, and the side I trust here is the Camarilla. Right. By Byron definitely would go with Valentine over, over the Anarchs, because... Uh, he, uh, well, first of all, Valentine's a been true like him, and Valent uh, Valentine wasn't mean to him when he set up shop in his dominion. Uh, so um, he kind of, he, he, as far as he can trust anybody, he trusts, uh, uh, perhaps wrongly, Valentine Moore. And David, what do you say? I don't trust any of them at all. The Nosferatu has spoken. <laughs> But what do you think? Should we drop Evertro? Should we side with Boss Callahan if he comes into this place? Or should we resist? This is our domain. Unless someone is speaking with the authority of the Prince, this is ours. That's what I think. Just thought you all should know that. Definitely. I'm sorry, Sean. I just your character. Oh, here. oh no. Just, just keep in mind that so far I haven't actually sh told you or done anything beyond that one act, and there is a pretty good reason for me sending her there because anywhere else she's, I'd be, I'd 
helps tell you that she'd be very likely to be killed by the Scourge. But other than that, there's been no me siding with the uh, Anarchs, visibly at least. Assuming, of course, that the Scourge is what's actually hunting her in the first place. Oh, no, I don't think that's what it is, and I made it sh clear that that's what I... I don't think it's the Scourge that happened right. on that. There was a Scourge around there that night. I think there was something else, and that's why I want her alive. I don't care. It's not a, it's a, not a matter of sect politics. It's a matter of, I don't know what the happened that night, and I want to know before she dies, because I want to. I want her alive in case we need her for something to, to deal with whatever happened on that night. So it's it's and very clear that it's not about sect politics. I don't care whether it's Camarilla, Anarchs. Um, I just don't want whatever that was to come rolling into Astorias, kill us all. That sounds like a relatively sane uh, thing for you to believe, actually. Well, yeah, so long as I have a fed, I'm relatively sane. And um, just as an FYI, if you do ask about that night, I do make it clear that feeding sometimes causes me to go a little off the walls. And it is, it is I am Malkavian. You guys know this. You guys understand this, I hope. So as long as you, as long as I, I'm not feeding, I'm okay. But when I'm feeding, just be aware that sometimes I become indisposed and... Right, uh, Byron, Byron will be understanding. He'll make he'll make a mental note that he'll definitely act understanding. Um, uh, and he, he is going to make a point though that uh, he's relatively fine with you uh, uh, letting Leslie go, but he's not. He doesn't want her to. Uh, he doesn't want the whole situation to come back and bite him. So he's like, keep an eye on that. Make sure it doesn't blow back. Yeah, I'll make sure that if something happens, it was me that took it off. And the reason I'm revealing my the weakness is because it's just one I can't keep secret too well, and it's one that I don't want coming to bite me, and it's at the wrong time. So that's it's not you know me trusting you guys. It's me not trusting you enough to uh, not fuck something up while I'm indisposed. So I want to make sure it's. It's all set in stone. It's all written out. Right. Sometimes right. there's going to be nights where Joseph just can't help. <laughs> I, I have a question for uh, Marcus here. Uh, did you ever uh, mention to Byron that you were asking around about that Methuselah blood? I mean, if you didn't, that's fine. I, no, was this, was, this, was, this, was me just, this was me just idly gossiping some of the earlier rumors. All right. Oh, and as uh, an aside, does David let us know uh, his plans for revenge, or is that something he's pursuing entirely on his own? You know, I'm... I'm not sure. It depends on how curious you guys are about the projects I'm pursuing. Well, I, I will have brought up that I do not like what they did, and it goes with caretaker nature. I do not like that they hurt what's ours. And I will like revenge, but as By Byron brought up, maybe sitting still for a moment until that, until we get a chance to talk to Valentine about it wouldn't be such a horrible idea. All right, you we know are. what? I've got something planned but I won't pull the trigger on it until you guys have had your talk with Valentine. Thank you. And if Valentine doesn't seem intent on making sure we don't touch them, I will most certainly like to help you destroy them. And uh, anything else we can salvage in the process will just be icing. Sounds good. So I think then it's just a matter of uh, waiting for Byron to make contact with Valentine, you know, outside of uh, the middle. Well, I'm still going to be looking into uh, uh, 
getting into a position where I can pull the trigger on this. I'm just not actually going to go through with it yet. My plan is to somehow get my blood into uh, Vito's food. Does he like his steaks rare? Because that might be a way. I'm not sure. I mean, uh, that's the reason why I want to get a hold of, um, you know, one of the cooks or more than one of the cooks. Uh, also, the medical. If you can somehow set up uh, a beatdown, I don't know how well protected he is, but if he needs a transfusion, that would be easy. Yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of avenues to exploit in Rikers, and I'm going to be trying to find as many of them as possible. But at the same time, I've got to get the permission from that possible Malkavian, which Carter is one of Carter Van der Weyden. It's worth noting, uh, your character would definitely know this, as it was uh, televised at the time, uh, David, pretty extensively since, you know, he's the recognized head of the Fratelli family, how, uh, despite the fact that he's been put into Rikers Island, he hasn't been placed with the general population. He has its own set of rules. There is a few areas that, uh, that even for that jail, do handle uh, a solitary confinement, and uh, he's been isolated so that, you know, he doesn't get killed. Because the uh, criminal prosecutors don't want that to happen if they can somehow think they can flip him. Is there... Hmm. Okay, yeah, I'm still going to try and get the person who prepares his food. Certainly. In this case, we can, uh... Game time can just pass several days. Uh, we'll actually, uh... I suppose we can commence on, uh, we can let the rest of the weekdays fly by, and we can start with the 9th of January or the 10th of January, which is a Friday or a Saturday. As you guys uh, recover from what's transpired and just spend the time going about your normal schedules, managing your own resources, finding out information about what the plans you want to pursue, and that way during the actual session, uh, these plans can be enacted or changed on the fly, depending on what occurs. I believe that sounds reasonable enough, unless uh, any of you have uh, further ideas on the matter. Sounds good to me. Same here. Yep, yep. All right. Sounds fine by me. In that case, um, we'll go ahead and... Uh, one more thing, then. Uh, just a, uh, a review of, uh, I suppose, uh, how your characters feel about what's transpired. I mean, these, uh, these past uh, two nights now encompassing the past two sessions, have uh, been very busy for them in multiple ways than one. Uh, how is each character responding to uh, the world around them? Well, Marcus is a little annoyed because he's kind of used to the normal, the normal, you know, the normal stay of the normal day-to-day -day life, you know. Go to a gig, leave gig with some drunk girl, feed, rinse, repeat. Sometimes do something else. I don't know. I mean, if I mean if I hadn't fought Mario, I would have been annoyed at that asshole. But you saw what happened. You did that botch. Uh, you uh, you certainly uh, took advantage of the botch accordingly. Yeah. So I'm not. He's, he's not as annoyed as he could have been. He's still a little bit annoyed that his last couple of days have been eventful. And uh, David is, well, he's got a whole lot of personal guilt going on right now. But aside from that, he's worried about the implications of what the past few days could uh, uh, have regarding what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, Byron is definitely going to dote on Evelyn for the next week, you know, definitely give her more attention and stuff and tell her that, you know, he's proud of her and all that type of stuff. Um, but other than that, he, I mean, he's going to wait to talk to Valentine and maybe go around and uh, get the word on the street, see how much of what happened is common knowledge and maybe learn a little bit more about what might be going on between Valentine and uh, uh, the Fratelli uh, crime family. 
Joseph is is really pissed at Fratelli for having even if Evelyn's not his ghoul having screwed with um what he considers part of his because it is all part of our domain and but more over than that more important than that whatever happened on that night uh at the with the the fog and the smoke and the whatever is more of what he's concerned with because that's well to him more important okay in that case that's going to be session end then uh, each of your characters uh, will be receiving three experience points from what you've discussed just now and the events you have gone through over the course of this night. Uh, I suppose I'd, I'd just like to take a few seconds. What did you guys think about the session? Did you have any major problems with it or me or how it went? I truly enjoyed the three minute long battle sequence. <laughs> I actually had a lot of fun, and it was really good, either way. Even if you're not familiar with the rules, I'm just in the same boat. I still don't know all the rules to fighting. I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah, I did as well. Well, and I spent most of it locked in a room, so... I know, Sean, I... Again, I, I'm sorry. I know no, I no, apologized that's, that's to you multiple of, times. That's, but... that's part of the weakness. That's part of what it, it's being Valkavian. I know. I just still feel bad. That's all. <laughs> don't, don't. Could be worse. You could have flashbacks as well. I, I, I don't... I, I understand that the party is going to separate, especially in such a selfish individual game like Vampire. I just, uh, part of my uh, job that I always undertake as a game master, dungeon master, storyteller, is trying my best to incorporate everyone. And when someone like that is just shot down and ends up spending the entire session more as a voyeur rather than a participant, it upsets me. Even though I understand it's the weakness that you chose for your character, and it must be enforced or else it wouldn't be a weakness. Just as how I must enforce the Nosferatu Zero appearance, uh, Byron's uh, pre-exclusion, and of course... Uh, uh, Marcus's uh, alcoholic, alcoholic. Of course, you. Of course, you guys could have always decided to to wait up. You certainly could. Have, they, the party certainly could have done that as well. There's, the world will continue to pass by. But if they wanted to wait a day, if they wanted to go to Flushing instead, the whole world is your oyster. Yeah, I mean, your character would probably understand it. There's no way Byron is just going to sit by after his ghoul got beat up in <laughs> So he's going to chase that down, but I did feel bad about it, you know, that you weren't being able to take no, part. No, it's, it's, it's fine to worry about it, but, but just, just as, as a uh, thing, now that you're, you've been informed of what exactly my weakness is, for the most part, um, you guys uh, just, um, I'm not going to ask you guys to, to wait up for me, obviously, just like i probably wait up if any of you guys got screwed over and you know, or incapacitated is to be expected. It's part of the genre. But um, just, uh, I can't help you if I'm not there. Right. It's everyone's job to, I uh, see, the purpose of the game is to have fun. And it's everyone's responsibility, not just mine, to ensure that everyone has a good time as well. Uh, now that you guys know uh, in character about uh, Joseph's condition, if there's a time where you actually want to be at full strength as a coterie, uh, provided the matter's not so pressing that you have to attend to it now, you could spend some time planning. Uh, just, yeah, and just to note, uh, when uh, Byron and Marcus were trying to leave the bar, my full intent was to say, let's just call it a night and regroup when Joseph... <laughs> that oh, was... no, I, I got that. I got what you were doing there. I got. I, I saw that. Yeah, I, I definitely would have let that go, too, until uh, I thought that what Marcus said was uh, was so insulting that they would have taken offense to that. Not to mention the fact that since they recognized how Marcus was, since they obviously had a watch on the business establishment, and uh, having had the information transmitted to them that Marcus was in the building... The Byron had uh, managed to escape their notice since he was cautious enough, but Marcus just went straight through the front door. And uh, particularly, 
particularly whenever he opened his mouth, man. <laughs> what can I say? I'm good at being an idiot. Yeah, can we sew that now? <laughs> but yeah, had uh, but had Marcus not even come to the building, uh, Byron got a dirty glare. Uh, due to the fact that he was different, and uh, he just didn't fit in with the usual crowd, but he would have been able to leave just fine, and... So what if there was a skulking Nosferatu outside, so long as he didn't try to do anything more? If he had tried, if he, you know, actually attacked the person who had left the van and knocked him unconscious, or tried to make him to a ghoul or anything, there might have been greater ramifications from that. But there weren't. He played smart. I still think you should have ghouled Mario. That I felt it would be fit. It wouldn't be fitting to actually reward someone through a botch. That's fair. I mean, I thought about it. Yeah, the uh, the the botch was you know it was rolled and uh, it was just put there as a punishment, not as something for you to gain uh, further reward from. Right. I thought about it though. I was like, you know, I figure I'll just have the damn police cruiser come. Whatever. If he still wants to try to ghoul him, then by all means. <laughs> would have been hilarious. Worst case scenario, I break the masquerade. Best case scenario, get a new friend. Uh, a but new hey, friend who, who hate loves you. Who's to say that the masquerade has not already been broken by you guys on various places? From uh, Lorenzo Fratelli might actually know what you guys are. Some people argue that even creating a ghoul is breaking the masquerade. Hey, hey, I'm the only one here that can claim I haven't screwed up the masquerade tonight. <laughs> that is a factual statement. Maybe. I mean, if anyone walked into your church and heard you screaming. I mean, uh, I don't think your bedroom was soundproof, so... Uh... <laughs> the uh, the two ghouls might have uh, had to turn away people from, like, the first time in years the church is actually closed. <laughs> We're getting fumigated, yeah. Vermin. Ter ver Sorry, vermin. guys. Sudden, you know, insect infestation. Our apologies. Business will resume tomorrow. What's that what? screaming? Oh, no. Don't worry about it. <laughs> New Age music. It wouldn't be too unusual to cl actually close a church at night, in the middle of the night. It's just, you know, it would be breaking from the deviation of the pattern, since you had said up until that point it had been open to all comers, no matter what time. Yeah, it's, it's obviously, that's the intent. The, the actuality of the situation is very, very different. Right. So, that's great, guys. Uh, like I said, you all got three, three more experience points to spend. Uh, the few days uh, will also give you guys time to uh, think about how you might end up spending those experience points if you're looking to potential training for something. Um, whether it's like, say, a skill or a knowledge you're going to be acquiring, uh, do let me know if the experience points are spent, how you're going to be spending them. That actually reminds me, uh, David is going to be trying to track down someone who can teach him Protean. Well, Protean is a uh, is a more limiting thing, certainly. That uh, That one's going to could take some time, and I feel that is a fitting enough to be role-played out. I'm totally fine with that. I just wanted to give you the heads up that that's what he was looking for. Okay. Oh, there's yeah, actually one thing. I'm going to be talking to David sometime during the week. I don't... It can wait until next session. This is nothing that I need to be done right now. But... After the fights, I think uh, Marcus definitely wants to cash in that boon that David owes him. He wants to learn some potence. So I want to get that started as soon as possible. Well, potence is a potence is simple enough that I feel as this is like one of those innate physical disciplines that uh if you if he uh, if you guys spend some time during each night, uh perhaps several hours over over the course of that uh although David might not be the best teacher and uh, Marcus might not be the best learner, potence is so innate. I mean even ghouls get it so. I think that's something that could be taught, and uh, it'll be open for Marcus to put points in as soon as he has enough experience points. I'm picturing a training montage with, like, punching cinder blocks and stuff, and 80s him music. repeatedly hurting his fist. With 80s music, yeah. 80s music pumping everywhere. And then uh, David will say, Punk rocker, bitch! And then it'll motivate Marcus. <laughs> Wax yeah, on! Know. Wax off! <laughs> Yeah, on that note, uh, I mean, Byron's going to want to learn all specs from uh, Marcus, too. 
Uh, he doesn't have nearly enough points for it, though. It's going to take like 10 points, uh, 10 experience points. But uh, he might broach the subject, and uh, you'll know now that he has presence, so you might want that at some point. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Oh, I said that uh, Byron is going to ask Marcus for uh, uh, Auspex. Is that, no, what did I say? I don't know. You Auspex definitely said Auspex. You said everything right. Jordan just, he wasn't all there. <laughs> no problem. I'm sorry, I was, talk I was, I was talking to my mother at the time. Yeah, my mother called me up during the session too. So, <laughs> um, no, I mean, he, uh, he, he, he's definitely interested in learning Auspex from Marcus. He doesn't have nearly enough experience for it yet. Um, it, it, you will see you can start the session and by the time and we'll say by the t probably according to Grim is after a certain amount of time has passed you spend them then yeah right. we'll, we'll just assume that uh, I mean we I don't know exactly where the session two weeks from now is going to begin but if it's several more days then uh, the groundwork of just a minimal aspects should be acquirable more intensive training I mean, like for uh, a point beyond the first aspects is reasonable enough I could say Although not an innate physical discipline, uh, because Jordan's character is so good at it. And Byron, despite his one intellect, is a receptive enough learner. It is also a relatively common discipline that almost every vampire learns. Every vampire who wants to live. Certainly Valentine knows all specs. <laughs> yeah, and so I will definitely owe you a boon for that. And uh, you mentioned you might want presence, too. That's the other thing I was saying. And so... You know, Byron's presence like or you dominant or something music. like that. Presence, dominate or something like that. Now, I'm not sure uh, how how willing a, a, a someone who knows dominate is uh, to teach someone else. Here's the thing. Uh, presence is a clan discipline for Marcus, and Auspex isn't for Byron. Right, I brought this up actually in the uh, chat. Right, he uh, brought that up, and my accusation was, you know, is like, well, that's not for me to determine what you people think the worth is. See, I, I think what clan uh, for me, though, I thought about it, and I think that it's going to be easier for him to learn. But in terms of if you're saying boon versus boon or whatever. Um, it, you have to determine how useful it is for that character and how much they want to uh, spend on it. Because, I mean, sure, you can turn me down for it, too. It's fine. You guys will have to spend 10 experience points to learn a new discipline, no matter what. But because something is a clan discipline, that means it'll just be cheaper to raise. It's up ah. to your characters whether they think that it's worth a equal trade of boons. It depends on what matters to them. If you if you if you feel that Auspex is worth learning enough that you would teach me dominate, there we go. I mean, I'm not asking for dominate. I might ask for something else. I would probably just hold on to the boon for a while. You know. Yeah. So you can save up ten more experience points. And then I'm like, hey. But I'm just gonna have to think about that. Um, meaning, I'm going to have to think about that. So. <laughs> right. The the consequence of giving away boons, and this is really something that happens in Camarilla society, and to a lesser extent, Autarchus or Independent, not really something recognized by the Sabbat, is, you know, you, you don't get to determine uh, what boon you'll be asked for. Now, there are certain situations where boons have different weights attached to them, whereas from minor boons to you saved me from final death boon. So, I mean, if the what you're being asked of is unreasonable, then you can say no. And as the selfish vampire as you are, you could always contrive to create situations where you fulfill the boon owed. Because some vampires do that. Especially, like, say, if the prince owed you a boon, he might create a situation where you needed his help. And then say, boon's been repaid. Because right. fuck you, guy. You could even say that perhaps Valentine created this entire situation you all had to deal with this session for the sole express purpose of having the excuse that you all owed him a boon now. That's what Byron is kind of thinking at this point. After what uh, Valentine said when he was leaving, like, yes, yes, I will be getting in touch with you. It's like, oh, goody. 
Hey, he said he was getting in touch with you, not me. As far as Marcus is concerned, he doesn't have anything to do with that Valentine asshole. Four days from now, Marcus walks back to his haven, fucking Valentine's waiting outside. Like, I feel as if I've seen this before. <laughs> I feel as if I should get a new haven. Is Match our gunrunner contact telling everyone, or what? <laughs> no. Yeah, he's the one pulling the strings behind everyone's back. It's fucking Match. He just wants to set everyone to war so he gets more money. <laughs> I would love this fact. <laughs> I don't so think I'm... I... Go ahead. I don't think I can make it true now. <laughs> so, it's no longer on the table. Oh yeah, and he's Kane too. Forgot about that. <laughs> what, why, why the hell not? If it's not gonna happen, let's just stack everything onto it. So yeah, uh, Aaron, on next the next night, uh... Marcus is going to come a-knocking and ask you to teach him potence. I don't have nearly the experience points to get potence just yet, but might as well start now. You're paving the way. I'm, that'll open it up to you so that now you have the training, so when you do have the experience points, you can take it, no problem. Makes sense to me. So whenever the next session is, it's been, like, nightly training sessions? Basically, yes. Awesome. Sean, what is uh what are you looking into for your character? More willpower. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense to me. Gotta, just gotta be like a botch of feeding roll. Get a beat up a dude. I I do wanna note though that Sean is the one who ultimately said, I'll risk it. I'll roll will I don't wanna spend another willpower point. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so that's, there's nothing I can really say against it. It's, it's part of what it is. There might end up being ways for you guys to earn some of that temporary willpower back. I just want to review stuff one, one, one step at a time. I think the intro to combat uh, worked out fairly well. Certainly it was an option that you guys never got into combat at all. Just like it was an option last session where you all ended up in combat. It's just the steps that you all chose as players. Yeah, I'm curious about what Marcus thinks of uh, Byron's uh, peacenik attitude, trying to calm everyone down instead of helping him out fighting. Especially since he knows now that Byron was packing heat. So. <laughs> you had a gun the whole time? And a knife? You didn't tell me these things. God damn it. Can't trust liberals. So, uh, so yeah, about that blue pin stripe. How about that? <laughs> oh, Marcus is Marcus is going to cherish it from now on. It's his lucky blue pin stripe shirt now. <laughs> yeah, and Byron, the, the little uh, blood droplets and stuff, and it's all rumpled. And yeah, he's uh, he's content to let him have it. <laughs> it's all it's yours. totally punk now. We can consider it payment for uh, for Byron's peacenik attitude while he had a gun and a knife. <laughs> Because if you had given me a knife, I could have ended that fight. Yeah, but think about this. They were being actually courteous enough to simply use their fists. If you had True. actually tried pulling a weapon... I probably would be on the ground groveling. With bullets in me. It's possible. Yeah, I thought... You still take half damn bashing from bullets. It's true. Still, but they're, like, way over there. They, if they, they, they give you enough bullets, though, you're meeting your final death. <laughs> bullets still hurt, bro. Well, and more importantly, they probably wouldn't have decided to end the fight. Yeah, yeah, if you'd actually uh, pulled out, you know, lethal weapons, they might have seen immediate danger to themselves. Instead, they kind of just laughed it off. Besides, um... Fratelli uh, hadn't exactly ordered you guys to be dead. It was more of a uh, a sudden decision uh, due to what Marcus had said. <laughs> That's going to be a reoccurring theme. Trust yeah. me. Subtle punk rocker. Puts foot in mouth. I thought Byron was supposed to be the one who put his foot in his mouth. What the hell? <laughs> I'm not giving him the chance. Byron I guess he has been talker. Making... He just said some stupid things when he first came to town. He's still unconvinced he just... about this whole Camarilla thing. 
He's, yeah, I mean, sure, if you pressed him on it, uh, the stuff he's unconvinced about is the Methuselah thing. He, he's, all, he's all about this with the Sabbat and killing him off if possible, but uh, <laughs> he doesn't thing. necessarily advertise it anymore. <laughs> Methuselah thing. Uh, antediluvian thing, sorry. You see, that, that's a good example. The Camarilla actually don't believe in that thing. And Gehenna, yeah. Yeah. Um, officially. Officially, yes. They, they stamp out all rumors and such. The Antediluvians don't exist. They're not going to take over the world. They're not going to eat all their children. Cain's not going to come back. God's not going to come back. Everything is okay. Officially. And then Demon the Fallen. Do the Anarchs have a stance on Gehenna, or is it left up to the individual Anarch to decide? Left up the individual Anarch. They're nominally within the Camarilla, but uh, they're actually a strong enough force here in New York City. Despite their forcible relocation, I mean, the fact that they, uh, I mean, there was that run-reported instance I told you guys of them staking a Malkavian elder and sending it back to Calabros. With a note from Boss Callahan saying, don't do that again. That's not to say bad things can't happen on Staten Island. Not to say lupines can't come, or, you know, Scourge, or Sabat, or anything else, but they, uh, they're a strong enough presence there. They keep that island of theirs well-kept. Yes, it is a well-kept island. Well, as long as Boss Callahan doesn't come and knock it in here, I'm... Next session, oh. Valentine and Boss Callahan are outside of Marcus's door. <laughs> Does everyone know where I live? <laughs> yes. Next thing, next thing, next, next thing is going to be Calibros is going to appear out of the sewers just next to me. And well, well Nosferatu knowing where you live, that's not a stretch. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's just going to be like every like, major power in the city is just going to appear outside my door one night. I'm just going to be like, that's it, I'm moving to California. <laughs> Might not want to say that too loud. It'd be like, that's it, I'm moving. Period. Okay. The end. Say, perhaps the Fratellis might have ended up figuring out where you lived if, you know, perhaps it's a good thing you botched because you spotted Mario and you actually knocked him out. Who knows what could have happened? They could have came to my place and given me free meals. Yes. He actually wasn't following you. Not until you rolled that one. <laughs> You mean he was just happy driving around Astoria late at night, still fuming about that asshole? I mean, it just so happened that you had such horrible luck that it was a great coincidence. <laughs> I suppose. Sigh. Alright, in that case, I'm going to conclude the audio recording. Fuck you, YouTube. Fuck you, YouTube, too. Say anything else you people want to say to the people of YouTube? Yeah, you know what? Fuck you guys. Fuck all y'all. Deuces. You guys.